Hey everyone, Hakaias here, and today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know in order to defeat Limit Cut Boss, True Organization 13 member number 10, Dark Riku. Riku is one of the more difficult bosses for someone like me who prefers to do these fights by identifying and taking advantage of patterns because most of his patterns are short and he chains them together so quickly that they can be difficult to identify, much less exploit. The good news is that when you do get a hold of him, you can juggle him pretty well and he takes a ton of damage. For most of these guides, I prefer to group the patterns they use into categories such as these must be blocked, these must be dodged, and this one leads to a combo opportunity. But Dark Riku doesn't work consistently like that in a way that guarantees success. So this time I'm just going to try to list for you all the things you can't block and then go over some of his more common moves and patterns and what to do about them. You cannot block the Dark Raid attack. You cannot block the Seeking Claws of Darkness. You cannot block the Geysers of Red Energy. Everything else can be blocked. Whenever Riku uses his shield, if you attack him, he will counter you. So there's good news and bad news about this. The bad news is the counter cannot be blocked, but the good news is, if you can dodge roll away and then come immediately back in for an attack, you can take advantage of a tiny combo opening. The timing can be a bit tricky, but once you've got it down, seeing Riku with the shield up will be like Pavlov's bell for you. Sometimes he will summon a corridor or circle of mines around you. These are not difficult to deal with on their own. They can be dodged through, blocked, or even attacked, and Sora won't take any damage. But while the mines are up, Dark Riku is going to be doing other things, which may throw you into the mines. So what you want to do is get away from the mines. Pretty simple, right? Just be sure not to dodge roll in such a way that you come out of your roll in a mine, because it will blow up on you. One of Riku's favorite moves after summoning a circle of mines is to teleport in, take a swipe at you, shield and spin around behind you, then do a combo of melee attacks. Just block or dodge these as you see fit. There's no opening here. Occasionally, he will summon a bunch of mines in a vertical pattern near him that I usually call a pyramid, even though it's not. After a moment, he is going to strike raid at you, then send a Seeking Claw of Darkness toward you, and then strike raid you again. You need to try and close the distance with him while he's doing all of these things because he will have an opening in between the second strike raid and the Claw of Darkness going off. If you don't hit him during this opening, he will go into his special move. He can and will go into the special move without these precursors at times, but these things always lead to it during my testing, and you do not want it to happen any more than you have to. His special move is probably one of the more complex ones you're going to see in the entire game, so try to keep up. It starts by darkening the arena and then summoning a quarter of mines. He will then teleport above the center of the arena and dive into the ground, sending out lines of dark energy. Then he will start dashing all around the arena. After a few of these, he will dive at you for another shockwave of dark energy that will spawn red geysers. He'll repeat that dash dive pattern twice more before going back to the center of the arena, sending out more lines of dark energy, and doing the dash dive pattern one more time. On the last dive, he'll summon significantly more red geysers than normal. So there are two ways to deal with this. You can block the lines, dashes, and dive, then air dodge or dodge roll twice in any direction but straight ahead to avoid the geysers. Repeat is necessary, and he'll be open to being comboed as the large group of geysers spawns. Or, you can link with Ariel to ensure you survive the phase, though you will exit the phase with probably no more than half of your health, and you'll probably miss your opportunity to get a combo opening on him. You can at least chip away at his health while you're linked, however. Whichever method you choose is up to you. I wasn't great at either of them, and I've defeated him using both. Sometimes he'll teleport nearby and start a melee combo at you where his sword trails dark energy, then teleport away again and come back in for a second combo. You can counter the second attack for a combo opening. Actually, even if you fail to block it, he's almost always still available for a combo even after you recover. Another pattern he likes to use is to slash and send two lines of energy out nearly perpendicular to him, then strike raid, then two more perpendicular lines. Then he'll send two dark lines directly at Sora. The last two can be dodged or blocked and countered for a combo opportunity. And like the last combo I described, you can even sometimes hit him if you fail to block it. Sometimes if you're close enough to block the first attack of the pattern, you can counter kick and the strike raid won't hurt you. Sometimes he'll do the first two attacks of this pattern and then decide to do something else. Finally, sometimes he'll immediately shield after the last attack of this pattern and you'll have to go back up to what I told you about shields before. 
He will often teleport above you and dive down to do a shockwave attack which will spawn red geysers. Sometimes when he does this attack, you can block the dive slash shockwave and counter him for a combo opportunity, but not always, and I haven't been able to figure out the difference. He also has three patterns that start with him teleporting toward you and then shielding and backing off. The most common follow-up to this is to teleport back in, slash at you, and then back off. The second is when he strike raids at you and then starts a melee combo that quickly becomes another pattern. The third is when he'll strike raid at you and then start dashing around the arena at you again. In the first, you can block or dodge the melee attack for a combo opportunity. In the third, you can block the dashes for a very short combo opportunity. And for the second one, you just gotta block or dodge. He can and will chain some of these combos together at various times so quickly that they seem like they were always meant to be part of the same combo. He will also occasionally use one of the attacks outside of his pattern, and all you can do is dodge or block as necessary and wait for him to use a pattern you can identify again. However, that is everything you need to know in order to defeat the Dark Riku data battle in the Limit Cut DLC of Kingdom Hearts 3. Please consider gently tapping that like button if you believe, as I do, that it would have been even cooler for Possessed Riku to be a member of the organization rather than a second copy of Repliku. If you've got any questions about this or anything else in Kingdom Hearts 3, please leave them in the comments below and I will be sure to answer to the best of my ability. Otherwise, until next time, enjoy the fight and may all of your paths be paved with hexagonal stones.